What's good, you two? We back at it again. It's your boy 2K to God, my man Sess. Welcome to the Gods of Boxing Talk. Now, there's so much hot shit going on that we had to do two back to back What's Hot segments. Yep. So, what's also hot right now? <laughs> that motherfucker, Adonis Stevenson, might uh. just might. He just might. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> man, he just might gain a little bit of this. That much. I ain't talking about it. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> you can barely see that motherfucker. I got to get yeah. you a microscope, B. Yeah. <laughs> this uh. much respect for me because he's entertaining a rematch against Andre Fonfara, possibly for May or June. Now, I remember, you know, a lot of motherfuckers, this, this just happened recently. Bernard Hopkins came out and was like, yo, big fight coming up, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Let y'all motherfuckers go, dog. And then you read the article, and he's extended an offer to Donna Stevenson, right? Yeah. But Donna Stevenson didn't say shit yet. He just extended an offer. Mm. Me and my man, shout out my man Bernard, on a major post with like 500 comments and shit. I'm going out of control, but it's whatever, nigga. 500 <laughs> comments, 500 likes, right? Yeah. Nobody said shit about how Stevenson is entertaining Fonfara. Oh, and my man wow. said it first. And then I piggybacked off and was like, word, I was just getting ready to post this shit. I'm surprised nobody said anything. Everybody was just taking that shit at face value. Like, oh, Stevenson's about to fight uh, Bernard Hopkins. It's like, no, hold on. We heard about him entertaining Fon Far weeks ago. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's the fight that's possibly going to get made. And they've already pretty much getting ready to set a date for it. You know what I'm nice. saying? Yeah. So this is an excellent fight. I like the Bernard Hopkins fight, but shit. The way Fonfara knocked out, uh, uh what was the motherfucking name? Julio Cesar Chavez. Whatever. Jr. Yeah, I don't know his name <laughs> no more, B. Whatever. Anyway, <laughs> the way he knocked him the fuck out, right? And he's never been knocked out before in his career. Not even against Sergio Martinez, he wasn't knocked out. Um, That right there, and, and then against Nathan Cleverly as well, a candidate for fight of the year last year, right? He has rejuvenated his career. He's ha he has become a much better fighter than he was the first time around with Adonis Stevenson in a fight in which he came back and dropped Stevenson late, yep. right? Yep. It was a situation where he gave up too many early rounds and it was too much for him to try to come back on, even with dropping Adonis Stevenson. So this, people, is an excellent fucking fight. And I give Stevenson a little bit, like I said, a little bit of respect oh. because I was a... Major critic of Adonna Stevenson. <laughs> yeah. That is the most duckiness, if that's a word, I just created the motherfucker who's <laughs> not. That is the most duckiness motherfucker in boxing. Along with Leo Santa Cruz. The most duckiness. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so if, if he makes this fight, and then possibly shit, I'll, I'll, I'll be satisfied with this fight, but let's say he fights Bernard next. Yo, I'm, I'm gonna give him a little bit of respect, B, even if he yeah. loses. What you think, man? Oh, uh, yeah, definitely, man. I definitely, definitely want to see this fight. You know, uh, my pick, Andres Fanfara, as my um, comeback fighter of the year. Yes, sir. So, when we did the video. So, man, I'm stoked, man. I mean, I really want these guys to step in the ring. I love the way Fanfara fights. I like everything about the dude, you know? he's um He really brings it when he's in there. <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, the first fight between Fonfara and Stevenson was very entertaining. They both knocked each other down. Um, you know, and I do believe that Fonfara has corrected some flaws. I'm not gonna say all of them, but I do believe that he knows definitely, definitely what to look out for in oh. that second fight. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah you he, know, I, he's, he's a good boxer, man. He can adjust, yes, he can adjust. Yes, exactly. He makes, he makes very good adjustments. In, um, adjustment. So I'm really stoked to see this fight, man. I really want it to happen. Yep. I honestly, I'm I'm not too crazy about the Hopkins fight, just okay. because of yeah, just because of where Hopkins is in his career right now. I, right. Don't get me wrong, I still think he can do it. I still think he can get in there and uh, and beat a lot of these guys. But I do want for the Hopkins negotiation to take a back seat in order to make this Fonfara fight happen. And the mm -hmm. winner could possibly fight Hopkins or whatever the case may be, mm -hmm. you know, sort of a legacy fight. You know, Hopkins is going out. You know what I mean? They could they could do it that way or promote it that way or whatever the case may be. But I want these two guys in the ring first. Yeah. I actually heard about this fight 
um, months after months after the first fight, they were talking about a rematch actually. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, months after the first fight, but it kind of got lost, I guess. And so now they're coming back and revisiting it. Yeah. And man, I'm stoked, man. I really want to see this fight. I'll tell you why I got lost. Because the motherfuckers started fighting niggas like Dmitry Sakovsky, whatever his name is. Uh, and, Tommy Caprince. Tommy, yeah. <laughs> Tommy Caprince. What the fuck? Get the, <laughs> Caprince. Car- Carpency. Whatever the fuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Get yeah, the yeah. fuck Carpency. out of here, man. Yeah, Saki yeah, Obika yeah. never fought at light heavyweight ever. <laughs> That's why the fight got lost, B. Absolutely right. All right. Next. Man, 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 man. This is going to be bad news, bro. Uh-oh. This is going to be bad news. So, and, and and I really think there is a potential of this actually happening. Now, for a lot of the fight fans out there who are really critical of this rematch, they're going to love this. Um, But we came out with a video not too long ago talking about how Manny Pacquiao, Tim Bradley, is a A-level matchup. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Even the third, the trilogy is an A-level matchup. Well, it is just broke news. That a guy by the name of Walden Bello, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but I don't give a fuck. Walden Bello, right. you know what I'm saying? He is a Philippine Senate candidate, right? He's looking for a seat in the committee. He's actually a rival going against Manny Pacquiao as of right now. Um, he has come out and said, hey, we need to stop this Manny Pacquiao, Tim Bradley three fight that's happening April 9th. Why? Because there's a law in the Philippines that basically says when two guys are, are going against each other for a seat in the committee, that one candidate is not allowed more publicity than the other. And he's saying that if Manny Pacquiao fights April 9th, which will be within the race between these two, right? Manny Pacquiao will surely get way more publicity than he will. And he's... <laughs> Absolutely right, cause Walden Bello ain't no fighter. The nigga ain't yeah. no actor that I know of. The nigga don't. Yeah, he ain't on World Star Hip Hop, you know, fucking strippers <laughs> or nothing like that. I don't know the nigga. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So, but I do know Manny Pacquiao, and I'm not even in the Philippines. Yeah. So, obviously, Manny Pacquiao is probably the more popular person. And if he were to have a mega fight in the middle of the race, this would indeed break that law that they have mm-hmm. for. Uh, candidates looking for a seat in the committee. So there is a major possibility that this fight might get postponed until after April yeah. 9th. What do you think, man? Why, uh, man, you know what? That would suck really bad <laughs> for boxing fans and for the people that's looking forward to this fight. Oh. But, <laughs> <laughs> but do, do, I do, do see, yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> I do see where I guess Mr. Bello or whatever his name is, I do see um, where he's coming from. I mean, you know, in politics, there there are a lot, a lot, a lot of tricks of the trade, and a lot of guys, you know, do a lot of tricky ass things to get ahead. Word. You know, yes, I'm sir. wondering why nobody brought this up um, in the first place. You know, why is he the first one to kind of bring this up? You know, uh, 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 Pacquiao has been a politician for. Uh, for a pretty, you know, for a very long time, right. in um, in the Philippines. Um, so I mean, I, I, I and we do know that his success in the states definitely translates over to his <laughs> to um, his likability and just who he is in his own country. Two folks. I mean, the, yeah, 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 absolutely. Maybe even five folks. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> I mean, they praise and worship Manny Pacquiao. Yeah, absolutely. You know. His people absolutely love him for all of these different reasons, you know? So I definitely see where this guy is coming from, like I said, but as a boxing fan, you know, it would suck because I do want to see this fight. You know, I do want them to fight a third time because I believe Bradley would beat him, you know? So, um, and I definitely want to see Bradley with Atlas against Manny Pacquiao. You know, um, Teddy Roach, it could be Manny Pacquiao's last fight. I'm sorry, I said Teddy Roach. Freddie Roach. <laughs> oh, Freddie yeah. Roach. It could be Pacquiao's last fight. So, I mean, I do want to see it. But like I said, I kind of understand where this guy is coming from. Hey, yeah, he's he has a legitimate fucking argument. Yeah. I mean, and what can we do? Now, I'm going to piggyback off something you said. You said he's been a politician for a long time. This could be why 
they turned a blind eye on this, even with this guy bringing up the law and everything. I yeah. mean, Manny Pacquiao, like you said, he's very praised out yeah. there. Um, <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure he knows the loopholes. Or he has somebody who oh, can... Oh, absolutely. Right. He has somebody who can create a loophole. I mean, Bob Arum himself is a very influential, powerful motherfucker. You know what yeah. I'm saying? He might be able to create a loophole. The, 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 the uh, Philippine government definitely might be able to create a loophole for him. So um, that in, in itself could be a reason why this fight still goes on April 9th with this guy saying what he's saying. Also, it's been... We all know that um, the Philippine government pretty much allows Manny Pacquiao to do his boxing, you know, in place of him being in different meetings and committee meetings and shit oh, yeah. as a chair, as a seat on the Senate. They pretty much say, ah, oh, he's boxing. He's Manny. Let him do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Let I him think, do it. Exactly. I think the same thing could happen here. It's Manny. Yeah. Let him do it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely, man. I, I, I mean, I couldn't agree more. You know, he's all, they're already bending the rules a little bit for him, yeah. so why wouldn't they in this situation? Yeah. Uh, and, and and then it makes it, it brings income into the country, in my opinion. Yes. Um, it also brings um, viewership or not viewership, but uh, uh, popularity to the country. Yeah. Um, you know, people are gonna continue to like Pacquiao. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Which it makes the Philippines look good because he represents their country. Absolutely. I mean, there's there's a whole bunch of good in this fight happening. Yeah. Um, so I I mean, it's a, he has a legitimate ass argument. And there's a chance that the Philippine government can be like, nah, we're going to uphold this because it is law. We don't know how much mm -hmm. they they value their law there. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, and also, I've seen the Philippine government actually go against Manny Pacquiao before. Yeah. Uh, case in point, the situation with his shoulder after the Mayweather fight. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one of the officials was like, that's some bullshit right there, B. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. hey, you never know what could happen, man. It's, just, it's, it's an yeah. inter interesting story. I'll, I'll, be in, I'll be on top of this shit, for real. I'm curious. Next, just look at my face, man. Now, uh, shit. Miguel Cotto. Now, look, look at this, man. Uh, look at this shit, bro. Now, a lot of people disagree with me, and a lot of people agree. All right. I said Miguel Cotto is too goddamn big right now to be calling out Juan Manuel Marquez or Ruslan Provodnikov. These guys campaign at one. Now, Marquez campaigns at 147, but he's a very small 147. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, again, Miguel Cotto, he campaigned at 147 and at 140. And a lot of people have legitimate arguments. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, uh, Miguel Cotto, he's a small 160. He's never really been at 160, which I really agree with. His intentions were never to campaign at 160. He just went up there to be to get the opportunity to be the first Puerto Rican to win titles in four different weight classes yeah. right yeah. so 160 was never a place he was going to stay or call home uh 154 has been though and and for quite some time ever since he lost to Manny Pacquiao and moved up and fought Yuri Foreman once you campaign for a a long period of time at a certain weight class that becomes your home right yeah. your body gets used to that people you're talking to people who have been in the ring okay your body gets used to that weight, all right? There's been talks with um, Miguel Cotto not even being able to make 147. Miguel Cotto has said it himself. He said in two different occasions, one, yeah, I probably can't go back down there, and then two, I can actually make 147. So there's some doubt there with Miguel Cotto making 147. So I told you right there that even in his eyes, he understands that he's older now and he's a bigger guy, right? So. But a lot of people are steadfast on the idea that he's a small guy and he's a natural 140. Okay, with that logic, Canelo's a small guy because he's a natural 135. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yep, he fought Miguel yep. Vasquez at 135 pounds and rematched him at 148. You see what I'm saying? Now, granted, he started off, he was 15 years old, but he campaigned under the 154 limit until he was 20. He's 25 now. So there's just about the same amount of time that he campaigned at 154 and under 154. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he could, we could say the same thing for fucking uh, Canelo Alvarez. So while Marquez is an older man, right? He started off as a featherweight, right? 147 is his max. That's his max. He's not yeah. gonna get any bigger than 147 
Unless he starts looking like fucking Marcos Maidana right now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Nigga sitting at home yeah. eating cupcakes and chitlins, B. Yeah, yeah. straight up. Yeah. yeah, straight up. You know what I'm saying? That's the only way Marquez will get into 154. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But Miguel Cotto's already there. He's been there for a while. Not only did he not, did he not stay there, he moved up in recent memory to 160. So mm-hmm. his body is used to that. He's used to being in between 150, I'll say 153. And 159. He's used to being in between there. Yeah. So calling up a guy in Rusin Provodnikov that is currently campaigning at 140, I think that's some bullshit. And and apparently oh. this fight can be made June 18th because they already have the date. They just don't know who they're gonna, gonna pick between Rusin Provodnikov and Juan Manuel Marquez. And one more thing before I turn it to you, I think it's bullshit. Not only that he's bringing up a 140 guy. But on top of that, there's a lot of guys at 154 that he could fight. You oh, know yeah. You what I'm saying? Yeah. At weight class that, like I said, he's been campaigning at since losing to Manny Pacquiao. He could yeah. fight anyone at 154. I just, I can name drop, but it'll take me another two minutes. <laughs> what do you think, man? Ah, uh, man. I'm with you. I mean, I have, my question is, why make this fight? What's the purpose of this fight? What has Ruslan done uh, that warrants a fight with Miguel Cotto. He just knocked yeah. out a bum. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, so, 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 I mean, come on, fellas. You know what I mean? It, it, it's if it's if Cotto is gonna pull him up to fight him, give me a legit reason why he needs to fight a Rustam Provodnikov when he's in a division mm-hmm. that has some more than um, some, you know, more than deserving opponents. I mean, come on, Kodo. You know, and, 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 and this fight to me, it's, it wouldn't even be a, a, um, an, an entertaining fight because of Kodo's boxing ability and because of what, you know, Kodo can do in the ring. Yeah. So I really don't like this fight. I don't like the thought of Ruslan being pulled up to 154 in order to make this fight. I don't like Juan Manuel Marquez fighting Miguel Cotto. They're talking about a catch weight. I don't know exactly what the catch weight will be, but I've just mm-hmm. heard the term catch weight thrown out there. And it's like, you don't need to fight a guy who's not really, I mean, he's he's one of the top 140 pounders, but he's not an elite 140 pounder. You yeah. see what I'm saying? Like, yep. we don't talk about Ruslan Provodnikov synonymously with a Terrence Crawford, a Victor oh, Postle, yeah, no. a Lamont Peterson. Therefore, he's not an elite 140 pounder. Yeah. So why do you need a catch weight with a guy who's not an elite 140 pounder? It's the same fuckery that Canelo's doing. A fucking catch weight that's in his favor, by the way, with a guy who's not an elite 147 pounder. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it, you could fight. Dude, Vane's Martirosian has been looking for a fight oh, for man. years. Yeah. Yep. Why not fight him? You see what I'm saying? Good, great fight. Jamel Charlo, Jamal Charlo, Julian Williams, Demetrius Andrade has been looking hey, for a fight hey, for don't, years. Don't you mention know? that guy's name. Yeah, I know, I, I know, but still, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like, what, what the fuck? Are you talking about what guys bring to the table? If you're trying to say that, then what the fuck does Rusin bring to the table? He's not yeah. bringing money. Absolutely right. Rusin's not bringing money. If that's the case, Chris Algeria would be rich off of that. He's yep. not bringing money. He's a fringe contender. He's an average guy in the division. You see what yep. I'm saying? These other guys, while they may not bring that much money either, picking Ruslan is not a better pick, especially yep. if he fucks around and beats one of these guys. If Miguel Cotto beat one of the Charlo brothers, Demetrius mm-hmm. Andre, right? Oh, or even oh. Vane's Monterosian, who uh, the last time I looked was number five pound for pound uh, in the 154 pound division. He yeah. was ranked number five ring magazine, right? Yep, yep. If he beats these guys, he is once again relevant for a oh, title yeah. shot. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And some of those guys already got titles. Yep. Uh, the Charlos. Yep. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, what? what is the point of this? You don't need a tune-up because you did well against Canelo. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? And a lot of people think you won. I don't. Can that, uh, Seth doesn't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, you know what I'm saying? But, but a lot of people think you won. So you don't fucking need a tune-up, right? Yeah. You don't yep. need a guy. And I'm not saying he's a tune-up or anything. It's just there's better matchups against more dangerous fighters at 154 that he yeah. can fight. I mean, he could even fight sorry as Billy Joe Saunders at 160. Billy Joe Saunders said he'll go down to 154 and come to America to fight yeah. Miguel Cotto. Go, go get that belt. Go That's get it. it. 
It's <laughs> right there, yep. And then at 154, you got Liam Smith. This nigga is greater than the motherfucking stoplight, B, when it's time to go. You yeah. know what I'm saying? <laughs> He's green as shit, B. Greener yeah. than a motherfucking leprechaun on St. Patrick's Day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. He should not have a belt right now. <laughs> and he's at 154. Go take that shit. And he's been calling you out. <laughs> ah, come on, Carlo. I don't know, man. I don't know, bro. That's going to end this segment. Once again, Miguel Cotto, <laughs> you never cease to amaze me, bro. Yeah, yeah, nah. nah. <laughs> do what you do in the comment section. YouTube would be real. This is real talk for real fans. One.